Man City starlet, 18, who found release difficult tragically took his own life. A talented, mature and hard-working footballer who had found it difficult after being released by Manchester City took his own life just weeks after his 18th birthday, an inquest heard. Jeremy Whiston, who had been with City's academy since he was 13, was pronounced dead by paramedics after being found by his mother in his sister's bedroom on October 24 last year. Paramedics had raced to the family home in Bagooley, South Manchester, but their best efforts to save him were to no avail. Manchester Coroner's Court heard that in 2018, Jeremy saw his hopes of a scholarship with the club crumble following a serious knee injury. He had previously spent five months away from the pitch and was dealing with a ligament injury that left him in excruciating pain, the inquest heard. This meant he did not progress at the same rate as his peers, and he was subsequently let go from the club in December 2018. Despite many attempts and trials with other clubs to take him on, the teenager had been unsuccessful. The inquest heard he had found it difficult to see his other sporting friends succeeding ahead of him and had found the COVID-19 restrictions hard as it meant he could not see friends who he cherished his time with. But Mr. Whiston's family told the hearing there was no evidence to suggest he had been struggling in the days leading up to his death. The inquest heard that on the evening of October 24 last year, Mr. Whiston had locked the door to his sister's room, the only door in the house that had a lock on it, where he then took his own life. His mother, Grace, found him at around 9 p.m. after she became concerned he had not come down to eat his dinner that evening. A toxicology report found traces of benzodiazepine that would have only suggested recreational use. Recording a conclusion of suicide, coroner's act Golombek said Mr. Whiston had intended to take his own life. But Mr. Whiston's father, Manila, told the inquest there was absolutely no evidence to suggest he had been struggling and that he did not believe he meant to take his own life. He added that football was his son's passion and that he had looked up to Manchester City player Vincent Company since he was a child. Manila said he was always happy as a child and had been for his whole life. He was a born athlete who was always very sporty and competitive. He always wanted to come first in everything he did. Football became everything to him. He would kick the ball around the house and would never give anything less than his best. He would succeed in everything he did. After the injury nothing was the same. It didn't stop him fully in his tracks, but he was in so much pain. I had to remind him that some things in life cannot be controlled. I kept encouraging him to be strong. It was hard for him but he always retained his love for football. Manila also added that his son had been set for distinctions in his college studies and was applying for forensic science courses at universities in Manchester in the days leading up to his death. The family had decided it was important for Mr. Whiston to turn his focus to his studies after an impressive set of GCSE results. There had been no change in his behavior in the weeks before his death, the inquest heard, and his father said that the teenager had merely suffered ups and downs like everyone else his age during the pandemic. In a heartfelt tribute from college friends, they said, he was an intelligent, funny and hard-working man whose positive energy would follow him anywhere. Jason Wilcox, Manchester City's academy director, said Mr. Whiston's knee injury would have had no impact on the club's decision to end his contract. He added that decisions were made based on the needs of the players and not the benefit of the club. Mr. Wilcox said Jeremy's injuries had halted his development and other players had progressed at a different rate. Mental health screenings were carried out by Manchester City's sports psychologists both before and after the decision for him to be released and no concerns were raised about his mental well-being. Ian Taylor, Greater Manchester Police's coroner's officer, suggested that Mr. Whiston was a hard-working and mature individual who people would turn to for advice. He added that there was nothing that made anyone question his mental health or stability and that investigators found no evidence he had planned methods of taking his own life. Summing up, Mr. Golombek said, it is clear Jeremy was a very much loved individual. I know for the family it will take time, but I do hope your memories of him will be those